first verse of the book of Joshua. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, and the assistant of Moses. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now get up and cross over the Jordan, and you and all the people, and the land that I am giving to the children of Israel. I have given you every place that the sole of your feet shall tread. As I said to Moses, from the wilderness of Lebanon, as far as the river Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites, and to the Mediterranean Sea, towards the setting of the sun, will be your territory. No man will be able to stand against you, you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. I will not abandon you. I will not leave you. The Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. This is a, uh, a time in history that's being marked by nothing but violence and political unrest and social unrest and things just aren't going the way we thought they would be going. And that's the way it is. You don't know what tomorrow holds. But Joshua was an avid servant of Moses. And everybody that came to Jesus, they came and became servants of the people. Their lives were dedicated to the people. The people of God mean a lot more than you think they mean to you. And you mean a lot more to God than you think you do. Because that's a difficult thing to do, is to begin to think as God thinks and work as God works. He does not always do it the way you think he should do it, but he has a way that's above your ways, and his thoughts are not your thoughts. He is good at what he does. He never fails. He's not up in heaven shaking at the mess that man has made on earth. He is waiting for the moment and the time to split the eastern sky. I don't know if that'll be it or not. Now, your duplicate maker, the devil, always duplicates what God does on a consistent basis. You have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You've got the dragon, the beast, and the man of sin. He duplicates everything God has done. That's why deception is so easy to get into. That's why he talks about itchy ears. When we hear pulpits are loaded with prosperity messages, everything is fine and dandy, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. There's a time and a season for everything. In the fullness of time, Jesus Christ came in the flesh to this earth to be just like you are, so you could very easily relate with them. Same with the man of sin, who is on his way, the beast. He will take on flesh. He will be shot in the streets of Jerusalem, mimicking the resurrection of Christ. He will rise again, and he will control this earth. It will be filled with prosperity, filled with peace, filled with economical rise that such as you have never seen. And you will not be able to get anything unless you take the mark of the beast. 666. Now, after that will come a cataclysmic time. A cataclysmic time. So you are very valuable in this hour very valuable sticking to the Lord. Now Joshua, I don't know and I don't understand God, I don't know why he had to wait 40 some years in order to put Joshua in the positioning that he put him in. Moses lived to be 120 and what shocks me, his eyes were neither dim nor his vitality didn't leave him. Now I'm trying to find mine. Okay? And I quote that scripture every day. 
every single day I blurt it out of my mouth. Some way, somehow, I'm quoting this word and putting it into the atmosphere. I don't care what people think. I lost that thing a long time ago. Don't depend on people. Don't depend on them. Yes, love them, but don't lean on them because that leaning will cause you to find out, uh-oh, there's trouble in River City because people will be people. They just will not in any way keep themselves in a positioning where they become stronger as a body, but most of the time the body becomes very weak. It's always looking for signs and wonders. Even at the transfiguration, they came down from the mountain. The disciples could not cast the demon out of that boy. Why not? Period. He told them their prayer and fasting wasn't online. We lose online quite a bit. He's merciful. He's long-suffering. But you've got to follow what he says. So now he comes to him, and I want you to notice, he did not grieve Moses. He did not grieve him at all. Not one single grieving. The people did, but God said, listen, I have business. Joshua, this is what you have to do. You're going into the promised land, and little did they know that they were going to face ten tribes, and every one of them have a meaning. If you do a word search, you'll find that out. Some brought depression, some brought fear, some brought intimidation, some brought lack. You have to know these things because you're not in a natural, natural fight. You're in a supernatural battle. What's going on in the heavens right now is beyond my reasoning and beyond my comprehension. But you're seeing the effects of it on the earth. What well, goes on up there goes on down here. But we, as the people of God, are to bring that which is heaven down here. God works through people. You are partners with God, hand in hand. You must get your hands into the Lord. You must do it. Now, they're on their way to a promised land filled with milk and honey. Now, remember, to give you a backstory. Joshua and Caleb were the only two out of all the spies that said, we're going up. I don't care if you look like grasshoppers or you don't. We are taking the ground that God gave us. That's the boldness we have to have. You can take that ground in your homes. You can take that ground when the enemy of your soul is against you. And believe me, he is a formidable foe. That's in the book. He's a formidable foe. He has a lot of tricks and a lot of strategies. But simply, you are the victor in it all. Now he gives Joshua this big assignment. There's over a million and a half people he's got to govern. Now that's a handful of people. Now Moses had governed these people and Joshua is the only one that survived. All of the other spies died and all of that generation died in the wilderness. None of them got to this point. They never got to the promise. That's why I don't want you to put your eyes on the promise. But I want you to put your eyes, practice the presence of the Lord. That's what you want to do. You want to practice His presence in your life. When you've got His presence, the promise will come. But His presence is a cut above everything else. When you've got His presence, Things will happen. You'll be at peace and other people will be crazy. They'll come to steal your peace if you allow them. Amen. You can watch it. And as you grow spiritually, you'll pick up barnacles on the way. You've got to shake some of them off. You can only help so many people. You're not Holy Ghost Junior. You can't corral 40 people at once. Listen to me. I'll sit on the couch today Praise the Lord that there's football on 
Now, I know a lot of ladies don't like it, but the point is, it's on, and I'll be a total rest. I won't be at rest if they lose, but I will be at rest <laughs> if they're putting forth a tremendous effort to win. I will do that. But I am not going to feel guilty or regret of anything that has happened up to the moment of repentance in this temple. Never. That's why the presence of the Lord is the most significant thing you can practice. And how do you practice it? On your own, alone, tell Him how much you love Him and accept how much He loves you. He don't have a bad thought about you. None whatsoever. We are watchmen on the wall. Joshua is going into a whole new ball game. Up to this point, they were fed from heaven. Remember, God's not fair, but he is just. And how do I know that? When that manna fell from heaven, if you had a family of five, you'd get enough for five. If you had a family of two, you would get enough for two. He is not fair, but he is just. Because most of the time, people that were getting two loaves of bread were envious of the people that were getting seven loaves for seven people. And that's how these spirits get loose in the church. You have eyes on one another. You've got something to offer to God that no one else has. It doesn't matter who they are. There's only one you. And you're never going to get away from you. You're going to wake up with you. You're going to go to sleep with you. You're going to shop with you. You're going to run a sweeper with you. You're not getting away from you. So learn to do one thing. Take me as I am and I surrender. So Joshua learned a lesson on the way. He learned that the Lord had his back. And he got your back. But I don't know how much you believe that. Especially when you think he's got your back and all of a sudden something just don't go right. And you try again and it don't go right. And you try again and there's failure. Hey, Christianity started with a failure. Did it not start in the fifth chapter of Luke when Jesus got into the boat of Peter and they went out to fish? They had come back that night that night with nothing. It was a complete failure, their fishing trip. But Jesus was on the boat. He makes the difference. Get them on your boat and practice the presence of the Lord, especially in the crazy time you live because people will sense it. They will sense. We have given up on that prayer language. It is more powerful than you can understand. It is communication with God, tongues. It is a massive instrument that is purely straight between you and God. And that's what you want. That's who you want to back you up. And when he don't back you up, pick yourself up again and go forward. When failures come, they tend to bring opportunities for a deeper walk with Jesus. Everybody wants part of the Lord. But the closer you get to Calvary, the more gun shy we all get. Because he starts asking you things that maybe you just disagree with. Wants maybe your time, maybe your money, maybe whatever it might be, we get gun shy. What's he going to ask now? We live in apprehension. Oh, Lord, now what do you want? Sometimes nothing at all. The one thing he always wants is you. That's what he wants, is you. These people did even know how to cook. They were fed from heaven. So Joshua walks through the host and says to them, prepare your victuals. They don't know how to cook. Ain't nobody have pots and pans. They didn't have no frying pans. They had to learn from scratch. And that's what we're doing. You're learning about spiritual life. Things that fit in the natural usually don't fit in the spiritual. Common sense is a blessing. But spiritual things are discerned by spiritual people. And some of you in here don't even think you're spiritual. 
you got more spirituality and you're scared to use it for fear that you're wrong. So what? So what if you're wrong? What does that mean? That means nothing. Nothing. Failure is nothing before the Lord. If it was, no one would have been able to write this Bible by the power of the Holy Ghost. Every one of them, there were murderers. I mean, they were all people that had serious problems. And the women that he pulled to himself during the course of his life on earth, you've seen what they've done. Even in the midst of his worst moment, where were they? Right at the cross. What did they do? Jeopardize their lives. Look at the church. Take a look around in here. How many male participants do you see? Six or seven? How many women? 10, 15? It's always that way. It's been that way from the beginning. There's something in them that are drawn to that love and can't get away from it. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. Because the enemy of your soul will convince you you're a physical wreck. Take a look at you. Look at you. You got old. You can't be used. Well, no one told God that. He went to a hundred-year-old man and said, you can have a baby. No wonder if the Lord said that to you, Mark. Huh? Surely. Surely. What do you think Sarah did? She did what you did when she heard them three angels passing by. You're going to have a kid. She went, <laughs> And the Lord knew exactly what she did and took at your wife's life. No, I didn't. She lied right away. Right away. God can use you. Sure, you've passed some uh, golden years in your life. But don't ever think you haven't accumulated that little writing in his book. You're storing up treasures all the time, even with the little things you do. And your mistakes to him are insignificant. He holds nothing against you. Once you plead the blood of Jesus Christ, you are free and guiltless. If you have regrets tonight, there's nothing you can do about yesterday. There's nothing you can do about your kids. They are in God's hands and they will stay there. Amen. So Joshua became a great leader. A great leader, but he was groomed a long time to step into a set of big shoes. And God was with him. He went down to the Jordan. <laughs> he went down to the Jordan and he takes his stole and taps the water. There was no departing of it. He had to walk in the water and keep walking. He taps it again. Nothing happened. He taps it, goes deeper. I guess he was waist high or whatever. Finally, finally God said, well, I'll give him a break. It opened and the people came through. And that's the same with you. You tap once, keep tapping, keep knocking, keep pushing towards that intimacy because he wants, let's put it this way, every woman in here that was married, do you or do you not remember your honeymoon? Same with the men. Do you not remember the honeymoon? Okay, when the rice passes away and all the ha 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 ho and the dinner and everything, then starts the real living. It's the same in the Lord. You all remember being born again, don't you? All right? Ha, huh? everything you touched, you never believed you were coming back down. Every prayer you prayed would answer. If you'd have prayed for golden hair, you'd have got it. It didn't matter. Now that you're in latter years, all right, don't think God has forgotten you. Don't be foolish enough to hit your knees and say, Lord, I'm old. I can't do what I used to do. Do what you're doing. Pray and stay as intimate as you can. Set aside a time just for you and him because he loves that kind of fellowship. Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you above all for your people because they're the ones that have established everything we see. Their sacrifice and their time all these years 
has not gone away from your eyes. You don't miss a trick. You see it all. You know what we're going to do the next moment in each of our lives. And how do I know the Holy Spirit, Lord, is in the room? I forgot about the football game. And at times, I used to fight, kick, and fuss to get to the house just to watch it. But I thank you for the discipline and the hard times. And I thank you for the way that you brought me. I bless your holy name for each person in this room that has tried to advance your kingdom and run in to troubles. I thank and I bless you that they got back up and kept pushing towards you. Help each of us to be guided and the Holy Spirit will gently guide us into that promised land and those giants in there we are not like grasshoppers in their sight we are a victorious people